Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up in my Healthy Minutes segment brought to you by Caldwell Soames, we're joined by fitness influencer Joey Thurman, nutrition expert, on-air personality, and author of 365 Health and Fitness Hacks That Could Save Your Life, and his newest book, The Minimum Method, The Least You Can Do to Be a Stronger, Healthier, Happier You, is also out now. Today, we're chatting about health hacks that will get you through the holidays enjoyably, the craze behind holiday weight gain, and why statistics show it's more overblown than you think. For decades, the conventional wisdom has been that most people gain about five pounds between the first forkful of Thanksgiving stuffing to the greasy egg breakfast on New Year's Day. Well, good news is that the five pound pylon is like a lot of what you hear about holiday weight gain, overblown. The New England Journal of Medicine published a study of adults showing that the average holiday weight gain was just under a pound, and more than half the people in the study stayed within just over two pounds of their other weigh-ins. Here to chat health hacks and weight gain facts that will make and take your mind off the pounds and put it on enjoying time with your friends and family is the amazing Joey Thurman. Welcome to the show, superstar. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me. Uh, I've got the Hacks book and I have a new book, The Minimum Method, which is even better than the Hacks book, FYI. Can't wait to get right to it. So let's talk about this. Even if the scale says you put on five pounds, you know, studies are showing you probably haven't. Uh, Studies are now saying that a lot of what the scale reads is more water weight gain than fat gain. And I assume, Joey, eating more starchy foods, hello, sweets and dinner rolls, and more salt than usual leads to water retention and bloat. And the scale often picks this up immediately. What do you say to this illusion? Yeah, I think we need to change our language with, I don't want to gain weight to, I don't want to gain fat. I want to lose weight. No, I want to lose fat and maintain muscle tissue. There's a big difference between the scale going up, especially if you're a female. Think about it. You, you have your menstrual cycle. You have, you have sodium loading. You have glycogen retention. It just means stored carbohydrates, sugar, all those sort of things, less, less sleep, stress. All these things will make that scale go up, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you added two, three, four, five pounds of fat. There was even a study where people ate 1,000 calories over their maintenance for seven days, meaning 7,000 calories plus which should make you gain two pounds of fat. Really, all they gained without working out and anything like that, and it was eating cream, just extra like creamer, which is all fat. Uh, they only gained one pound of fat, having 7,000 calories over it. The rest was lean muscle tissue or lean tissue. So it could be water weight. It could be glycogen storage. And think if you actually worked out and ate clean those 1,000 extra calories and use that to fuel your body and your workout. So just because the scale goes up, does not mean you lost fat just because the scale goes down does not mean or that that you lost fat. So gaining weight and losing weight is completely different than gaining fat and losing fat. Yeah, thank you for simplifying that because again, comes back to research, research and it really comes down to understanding how the cycle works with respect to your body, your intake, your calories. And I always say, listen, for a holiday hack, load up on veggies first, right? It's actually not better for you to show up to a holiday meal super hungry with your turkey pants on. You know, when you're starving, we eat quicker. We enjoy, I always tell my daughter, you enjoy less mindfully and you overstuff yourself. So, you know, eat some veggies as a pre-dinner snack, you know, to ensure that you can enjoy foods you want, but you're still getting in the, nu- the nutrients your body needs. So I always use that as an excuse. Let's move on to your highly unlikely to break even by exercising more during the holidays. So this type of food exercise math is always faulty, Joey. I'm 100% pro exercise for its much needed, you know, mood boosting benefits. Plus it could be a great escape from a too much uh, family together in the scene, but it doesn't cancel out, you know, the stuffing and the eggnog. Weight loss is around 80% what you put into your body and 20% what you sweat off. There's also the risk that thinking of that, you know, you deserve another wedge of pecan pie because you power walk that morning. Well, you know, we all know how that story ends. So what do you recommend? Yeah. So one thing, yeah, we can put all these different numbers on it. And, you know, I say it's, it's not just diet and exercise, it's sleep, diet, exercise, right? You know, diet is just what you eat in a day. So it doesn't matter if you're eating the standard American sad diet, or if you're having, you know, keto, vegan, all these sort of things, whatever box you want to put yourself in. So, Walking 
After a meal is a prokinetic. All that means it helps digestion, nutrient absorption, helps get rid of some gas, helps you burn some calories. All these different things that you can do to help mitigate a little bit of it. But if it's one day, if it's Thanksgiving, if it's Christmas, any holiday, I think people get too caught up and like, oh my God, I gained all this weight, right? And we, we touched on that a little bit and, and really give yourself some grace. If you've been good all year long, you know, and then you have that one day where you have that piece of a pecan pie, fine. But don't have the whole thing because everybody's like, oh, moderation is key. You know what? Moderation is not good if that piece of pie is your little bit of blow, if that's your cocaine. You had that and all of a sudden you went off the rails. You know, it's the same thing with like an alcoholic. If I say, oh, it's okay. You did well. You can have a shot uh, of booze today and you're an alcoholic. No, you can't. If that pecan pie is your alcohol, is your drug, you cannot have that. And it's okay to think about that. So abstain from it. So having those veggies first, having some sort of protein first helps satiation, getting moving, exercise snacking, as I talk about in the newest book, The Minimum Method, think about getting a six minute workout in with a one minute cool down before your meal, that will help those calories be more stored as glycogen and refueling your body as opposed to being stored as fat. Because there, there's a cellular process that happens and we don't need to get into that, but basically your body's like, oh, I worked out, so the fuel that I'm gonna take in, let me repair and help the mind, help the body. And then in turn, though, those calories will be more likely used as fuel in your car as opposed to being stored as excess fat. Wow, I love what you're saying. Love it, and I love the way you're putting it. So essentially, one of my mom health hacks I always tell people is, you know, try healthier versions of your favorite holiday foods. People don't have to stick to the exact mashed potatoes, you know, the same recipe you made every year. You can you can you can buy frozen pie crusts instead of DIYing your own. And and when planning holiday meals, I always opt for homemade over processed foods. Yes, buying from from a local bakery or takeout from a from a healthier restaurant counts for the non chefs, but also identify where you can add more nutrients into to the foods that you do love. Um, let's chat about we're also unlikely to make up for overdoing it quickly, even if you diet in January. So for instance, Joey, if, if one is boozing and sugaring it up, they might not even have time you know, to, to go cold turkey. So sweet but get sweet. Once you start, you know, mainlining it, you want it and a salad no longer looks good. You kind of touched on this before. If if that's your trigger, your cocaine. So what are the hack? What are the hacks around this? Yeah. So one, our, our taste buds are very adaptive. You know, if you're used to having sweet, 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 you're always going to crave more sweet. Okay. So same thing with spices. Like uh, people that come from come over from India, I think our, our food tastes bland because they're so, you know so used to extra spice. So being aware of that and being aware of your taste buds, I think one thing is the first goal. It's like anytime anybody has a problem or depression, like recognizing that really helps first. So recognize that you might have these little triggers because, you know, eating isn't just because you're hungry. You know, it's, it's enjoying something and people are trying to tell you to eat or you should have this, you should have that. So you can't really work off those things. But how about adding more good things into your life as opposed to always taking away? We always want to go through the pantry and rip out all this sort of stuff. But there was a study out of Michigan, I think University of Mich Michigan, where they added greens and healthy foods into people's life and still allowed them to eat processed foods. The people that had access to the vegetables, to um, the clean foods, if you will, ate 500 less calories per day than the processed foods people. So maybe start adding those vegetables, a green smoothie, something like that into your day and naturally just think about sitting and digesting. So change the standard American diet from sad to sit and digest enjoy your food, even sitting down and making sure you smell your food, you look at your food, you're grateful for your food, you actually eat 10% less calories than people who are going to sit and watch TV and, you know, um, eating on the run, stuff like that. Those little things, it's not only what, what we eat, but it's also what we eat and absorb. So sit down, enjoy the food, be grateful for it. Even if it's that piece of pizza, that pecan pie, enjoy that pie. Don't feel guilty right away from having it because that's going to have that stress response. And in turn, that's going to be fight or flight. Your body's not going to produce enough digestive enzymes to break down and absorb the nutrients, the good nutrients that are in that food. So yep. sit and digest, be grateful for the food, whatever that food is, and don't demonize any food for yourself. If you're going to eat it, eat it and enjoy it, and then try to add some good things into your life. Amen. All right. Now let's move on to 
the gingerbread dude is not, and we repeat, not the last cookie you will ever eat. So kind of like an end of year clearance sale. We see this, this groaning buffet table and feel like if we don't snarf whatever's right then and there in front of us, we'll never get another opportunity. What is the advice here when, when seeing all this food jump at you? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, right? It's in front of you. So one, like just recognizing that and thinking about, okay, you know, it, it, how am I going to feel? So have that thought cycle. I call that, you know, in the new book, I, I say, what are you going to do? Think about what happens to you if you eat this cake. Okay, we'll keep with the pecan pie, right? Um, if, if you're going to eat that, how do you feel afterwards? How do you feel during? If afterwards you're going to beat yourself up for days, for months, because you had that extra, you know, piece of pie or, you know, full on cookies, then no, you should not have it because that's going to create that negative thought cycle, that negative thought loop. But if you say, oh, if I abstain from this, I'm going to be healthier. I'm going to reach my goals more. I'm going to be there for my children, for my grandchildren. I'm going to move better. I'm going to feel better right there. Skipping that gives a dopamine response, which is a little drip of reward and motivational pathway. And you think, oh, that gives a positive feedback loop because you didn't have that gingerbread. And that is going to help you right there. Just being aware of your entire thought cycle Create the positive feedback, feedback loop. And sometimes you need that negative feedback. Oh, my God, I'm eating this pie right now. I feel guilty about it. Make yourself feel guilty, you know, afterwards and think about, OK, wait a minute. Negative. I felt bad during that pie. I shouldn't have it again. I felt there good go. for abstaining, right? That's right. And, and, and I think it's your, it's your frame of mind and it's the way you are reacting to the situation. So I like what you're saying. Now, lastly, we have about a minute left. So sure. stick, stick to your regular sleep schedule and find balance with alone time and socializing. <laughs> Easier said than done. What are your thoughts to actually accomplishing this? Yeah, I mean, there's seven days in a week. There's not just, you know, five days in the weekends we go to crap. So try to go to bed and wake up around an hour the same time every day because that will regulate your circadian rhythm and every cell in our body is regulated by a 24 hour rhythm. Our hormones, our sleep, our brain, everything. If you sleep better, more consistently, even if it's less hours per night, if it's five hours per night, that's better for you than five hours randomly. So if you go to bed at 10 p.m., wake up at 6 a.m., Monday, you know, Sunday through Monday, every single day of the week, not just on the weekends. Don't try to catch up for it. Regulating your sleep will regulate your body, will regulate your mind. I love what you're saying. Thank you so much. You are the expert for a reason. We are out of time, my friend, but that was very enlightening. Thank you so much for coming on. I enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you. Guys, you definitely have to check out fitness influencer Joey Thurman. Head to his website, joeythurman.com. You can find him on the gram at Joey Thurman Fit. That was my Healthy Minute segment brought to you by Caldwell Soames. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. Remember, know that health is more than just diet and exercise. If you're still under the impression that one meal or a few holidays can drastically affect your body long term, you should also know that health is not a two-part formula of diet plus exercise. The podcasts we listen to, the people we spend our time with, the shows we binge on Netflix, the accounts we follow on Instagram, the way we speak to ourselves and others are all things that feed us too. If you're not as focused on the ways you're being fed and nourished besides the food on your plate or the ways you're burning energy besides exercise, you're missing key pieces of the puzzle. Bottom line, you could eat whatever you wanted and not work out once and still have lots of opportunities to nourish yourself. Focus on how your relationship nourishes you, the compassion you're giving yourself, and how you're spending your free time to truly become your healthiest self. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Caldwell Soames Incorporated. Investing globally in transformative businesses like Original Digital Corporation or ODC, ODC develops advanced consumer and commercial fintech solutions such as OG Pay, which will transform the way you manage your money. From sending and receiving money globally for free, paying for goods and services in person and online, pay bills, buy and sell digital currencies, all while earning interest. OG Pay is easy to set up, FDIC insured, and your information is secured. Check out OGPay.com. Com.